All right, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, I want to start by thanking uh, Michigan State Police, the FBI, and all of our partners uh, in this investigation. I uh, also want to thank the hard working men and women of the Detroit Police Department, specifically the homicide section. I uh, want to offer my sincere condolences to the family, friends, and loved ones of Samantha Wool. Uh, she is beloved. Everyone I have talked to has spoken about her contribution to our community, and she will be sorely missed. The purpose of this press conference is to bring clarity uh, to the incident that has brought attention uh, of our community, local and national leaders, uh, and even international outlets. Uh, I'm going to lay out uh, what we know now. I'm going to bring up the deputy chief uh, over our homicide unit, and then we'll conclude with uh, some comments from the FBI uh, on this case. Uh, I hope everyone understands that we're limited in the information that we can share. This is an active investigation. Uh, and there will be points where we cannot share information. On the morning of Saturday, October 21st, a 911 call came into uh, our 911 call center. And the call was regarding uh, an incident that occurred at the 1300 block of Joliet Place. Uh, it was described as a person laying on the ground unresponsive. Responding emergency units uh, made the location and declared that the victim uh, was dead on scene. Uh, upon investigation, it was determined that that victim was, in fact, Samantha Wool. While at the scene, police officers ob observed a trail of blood leading officers to the victim's residence, which is where we believe the crime occurred. An examination of the victim uh, led to the discovery of multiple stab wounds on her body. What we know right now is that the victim, Ms. Wool, uh, was at an event Friday evening. She left the event at 12.30 a.m. By all accounts, uh, she was not uh, in any discomfort, any distress. Uh, she was her normal uh, positive and pleasant self, uh, as described by some people that we have interviewed. There was no signs of forced entry. Again, there was no signs of forced entry at her residence. We believe that there are no other groups or anyone else uh, at risk uh, w in regards to this particular incident. We believe that this incident was not motivated by anti-Semitism and that this suspect uh, acted alone. Again, that is what we know at this time. There are several factors that has led us to this conclusion. Uh, we are not in a position to discuss all of them at this point. Obviously, there are parts of the investigation that we cannot get into again. Uh, it is germane to the closing of this case. There are certain factors that uh, are only shared by the suspect uh, and our investigators. Uh, so there are certain key points that we, again, will not be able to discuss. Uh, at this time, I'll bring up Deputy Chief Sloan uh, to get into some of the, the areas that we can discuss with you. Deputy Chief Sloan. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chief. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, sadly, Ms. Samantha Wall was found deceased in front of the 1300 uh, block of Joliet Street on Saturday around 6.30 a.m. Uh, uh, she was suffering from apparent stab wounds to her body. We are currently working with our partners, as the Chief mentioned, from the FBI and Michigan State Police to establish exactly what occurred in the hours and days prior to Ms. Wall's death. At this point in the investigation, we are examining every piece of evidence we have uncovered to determine what exactly led to this incident, as well as following up on the extensive amounts of information that we have gained during our investigation. We have and are in the process of conducting countless interviews to learn everything about Ms. Wall's life, including any possible motive or opportunity to harm her. What we do know, again, from what the chief mentioned, is that Ms. Wall did attend an event on Friday evening, which we know was a wedding. Uh, she did return home around 12.30 a.m. on Saturday morning, and we did discover no signs of forced entry to her residence. At some point between returning home from this event and in the early morning hours when she was discovered, Ms. Wall was unfortunately fatally assaulted. By all accounts, Ms. Wall was very well liked in the community, so it is clearly very shocking to her family and to her friends that this incident has occurred. 
I'd like to extend our gratitude to the men and women of the homicide section, our partner agencies, for the endless hours that they have dedicated to this investigation. Uh, we are committed to our continue, uh, continued work uh, with our partners to identify the person responsible in this incident. Again, the investigation is ongoing and we continue to ask for the community's assistance in solving this crime, either through 1-800-SPEAK-UP or Rewards TV. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Shavaya Gibson. That's spell C H E Y. V as in Victor, O R Y E A. Last name Gibson with a B. I'm the special agent in charge here in Detroit for the FBI, which covers the entire state of Michigan. I want to thank all of you for being here today and thank you, Chief, for this opportunity. I want to express my sincerest condolences to Mrs. Wall's family, her friends, and the community. Um, during this tragic loss. As stated by Chief White, we are providing technical, forensic, and investigative uh, support during this DPD investigation. And I will say if you have any questions with regard to the investigation or any facts thereof, I'm going to defer to Chief White um, at this time. Um, and again, thank you guys for being here and thank you, Chief White. Again, I just want to uh, assure the community that everything possible is being done to bring uh, this case to a close. Uh, I ask for patience. Uh, there's a lot of evidence and information that has to be analyzed. Again, we're very thankful to our partnerships with both the FBI and the Michigan State Police. Um, access to crime lab uh, activity and, and things such as that helps move this case along uh, quite quickly. Uh, but we want to make sure uh, that we don't rush and that we do everything uh, to make sure that uh, evidence is analyzed, search warrants are got up, and uh, we bring uh, this matter uh, to close with the appropriate person being held accountable uh, for these horrendous actions. With that, I'll take any questions. Hi, Chief Ryan Marshall, uh, representing WWJ News Radio 950 here locally, CBS News, New York, uh, nationally. Even though you did say that there isn't any anti-Semitic um, motive here, um, how, how, I would say, how concerned are you that having this happen in, on Saturday and now you guys coming on Monday, that maybe somebody that hasn't seen this would say, hey, we need to have some sort of retaliation given what's happening with Israel and Hamas? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're always concerned uh, with retaliation on any homicide and certainly uh, the, the international uh, situation that we find ourselves in now bring us additional concern. Um, but our goal is to be transparent with the community, be transparent uh, as to where we are, uh, to alleviate concerns that those may have, that others are at risk. Based on what we know today, right now, uh, with the information that we've, rec we've rec received and uncovered over the past uh, few hours uh, and certainly at the onset of this investigation, we are confident uh, with our position uh, where we are right now today. And uh, second question is, given that that isn't the motive, can you speak to anything that could have been involved in why she was killed or murdered, uh, a motive? Um, can you speak to any, anything in that regard? Yeah, you know, as I indicated, and I, you know, we, we certainly want to alleviate concerns. We certainly want to, to let others know, all know, uh, that we are actively investigating this and that we have not uh, discovered anyone else to be at risk. Uh, but in that, we have to be very, very cautious as to what information we share. There are some very intricate details about this case that, if revealed, um, could really damage what we're, what we're trying to accomplish. There are some facts. Uh, that are known only to our suspect. Uh, and uh, so I can't get into causation right now um, or, or what he or she may feel was that. Um, but more to come on that at a later date. Uh, right now what we want to do uh, is, is get every bit of information we can clarify, analyze, uh, the evidence that we have analyzed so we can put more information out to the community uh, to help us identify and bring the suspect to justice. Thank you, Chief. 
Chief White, my name is Alex Perche from ABC News. Um, thank you for uh, taking our questions. Um, you've, you've mentioned suspect a couple of times, so I'm just curious, I mean, do, do you have a, a suspect or, or, or suspects here? So in, in the process of an investigation, the, the detectives, you know, they work a number of different theories. Um, we are working through uh, what we have identified are some persons of interest, uh, and we're very confident on the track that we're on. Um, but we're early. We're very, very early in this investigation. Uh, and once they're done with that level, uh, each, each area of the work requires uh, specific investment of time, concentration, uh, and development on its own. And so to answer your question, the short answer is we have a number of people that give us interest. Uh, we are just short of calling uh, one of the people a suspect, um, but we are working to that end and we will be there, but it just takes time. And again, I'm asking for patience as we work through every aspect of what we're doing. Um, there's a lot of information uh, to be analyzed. Uh, investigators have worked literally nonstop uh, since we received this case. Uh, and I'm confident in the, in the hard working men and women of the Detroit Police Department. They, they are really, really good at what they do. Um, I just gotta give them time to do it and we're gonna get there. Uh, so yes, we, we are confident that we're gonna develop a suspect. We're not there right now as, as of this press conference. I understand. My second question for you, sir, is can you give any, any clarity or any, any theory as to, to how Ms. Wool ended up outside of her house, that trail of blood that led to the sidewalk? Yeah, and we've worked on that, and the, well, the detectives have worked on that. Um, and we, we're working right now with, um, you know, I, I will say that some of what I'm gonna say is somewhat graphic, well, very graphic. Uh, and again, my heart goes out to the family who may be hearing this and not be easy for them to hear. Um, but we are working with the Michigan State Police and the FBI on blood splatter experts uh, that will determine certain things about the event. Um, what we believe to have happened is after she was attacked inside the home, uh, she stumbled outside and collapsed uh, in the yard. Uh, so um, that's where the blood trail appears to lead us. Uh, and we're pretty confident uh, with that assessment, but we're gonna confirm that through forensics and, 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 and experts in, in that field. Thank you. Hi, Chief. Jesse Kirsch with NBC News. Appreciate you doing this. Um, you mentioned that she left the wedding around 12.30 in the morning and she was attacked inside the home. Uh, we've heard from sources that she did not have any defensive wounds. Did she leave this wedding alone? Yeah, I, I can't get into that. And the, your sources, um, you know, I'm not going to confirm uh, or deny that at this time. Uh, again, uh, a lot of, you know, what sources don't take into account is how it could damage a case. And, and so I can't confirm or deny that. Uh, that's a, a very key part of our investigation that we're looking into. Okay. And uh, just point of clarification for my second question here that you said persons of interest, no one is in custody at this point. So no one is in custody. So if no one's in custody and you said people, you don't believe anyone else is at risk here, and you uh, stress that you don't believe this was tied to anti-Semitism, but obviously people have jumped to those conclusions, um, and you've got someone still out there who you say is responsible for this. So what do you say to people who are still worried about their safety in the climate of what's going on in the world right now, and it's particularly Jewish, Muslim, and Arab communities? What would you want people to know about their safety if they are jumping to conclusions. Yeah, and, and so we, we certainly don't want uh, folks to jump to a conclusion, but we certainly understand uh, how one could arrive at those conclusions uh, absent any uh, information to the contrary. And that's why we're here today providing information on this particular case. Um, we don't feel as of this press conference that there's anything that supports anyone else being at risk as it relates to a hate crime. Um, we certainly know that this is a dangerous person, and this is why we're working tirelessly to identify a suspect and get the right suspect off the street. Um, and once we get that development done, uh, we will immediately push that out to our media partners as well as to our community partners to help us identify and, and bring this person to justice. Um, beyond that, um, we're gonna continue to work hard and continue to push out transparent information so that the community is aware. Afternoon, Chief. Uh, Malachi Barrett from Bridge Detroit. Yes, sir. Um, 
I'm wondering, I mean, it seems as though the, the cause of death has been pretty well established as stabbing at this point, but I'm wondering if an autopsy has been completed and if you're able to tell us how many times she was stabbed or, you know, anything else about cause of death. Yeah, this is going to sound like a rerun for me, and I apologize. I know you have a job to do, and I hope you appreciate we do too. Um, that number is important for us to keep close. Uh, it, could, it could be uh, the one piece of evidence that breaks the case open if we're talking to the right suspect that would know that no one else but the police does. So um, right now we're not going to release that uh, information. Uh, and, and the autopsy, yes, an autopsy was completed. Uh, I don't think we have the results yet, do we, DC? We did receive the post, yes. Oh, okay, we do have the post now, so. But I can't release any information in it. And I know the, the timeline is still being put together, but I'm wondering how long she was potentially on the sidewalk or, or outside her home. Yeah, and you know, uh, and I'm prefacing my comments again, I, I, I can only imagine the heartbreak that the family's hearing every time I open my mouth about this case. Um, we're confident that she was there quite a while. Uh, we're working through our video assets in the area uh, and a number of other uh, things that we're going through right now with neighbors and, and you know, all of the digital doorbell systems and things such as that to identify uh, when she was seen last physically outside of the residence um, and how long she may have been there. And uh, we're, we're, it's a lot to go through. Uh, we're doing search warrants on uh, ring doorbells and things like that right now uh, in the area. And so, uh, but we're confident that she was there quite a while. It, it kind of leads to my last question. I, I was curious if the I mean, I saw that there were ring doorbell cameras that I'm sure you can use to help identify suspects. I'm also wondering if there were green light cameras in the area. The, the condo neighborhood itself seems to be pretty self-contained, but has that helped you identify, you know, potential suspects you're looking into, persons of interest? Yeah, so as you know, the, the, one of the, the provisions of the green light is that there's no facing of, of residential uh, communities. Um, that was a concern early on, I think. Um, you may have been part of some of the conversation around that. Um, but as it relates to routes of travel, they could certainly be useful. We just have to get there uh, once we um, figure all of that out. We'll certainly be looking at green lights and, and other video systems to see routes of travel. Um, you know, one of the things that's of particular interest to us is when she left uh, the wedding, uh, does a vehicle appear uh, with her in more than one uh, stop, right? So we'll be tracking her entire route uh, digitally uh, that she took from uh, the wedding to, to see if anyone was following her. And if you see the same vehicle in two different places um, near her, uh, that would be of a concern and an issue for us. And, and where was the wedding? Uh, we, won't, we won't do that. All right, thank you. Hey, uh, Omar Jimenez, CNN. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I know you- I'm you, sorry, who are you? Uh, Omar Jimenez, CNN. Oh, okay. um, thank you for taking the time. Um, I know you said that uh, at this point, you haven't seen any indications that this would be any form of anti-Semitism. I, I guess my, my further clarification and question is if you don't have a suspect identified and you haven't shared what led up to this killing, what makes you so confident that this isn't? Essentially, have you ruled it out despite not having found it just yet? Well, you know, when we look at the case, um, we, there are certain tracks that these types of cases take. Uh, when we talk about hate crimes, uh, you know, there are certain tracks that they take. And we have looked at uh, this particular track, and we're confident with the information that we have right now uh, that this is not um, what, what we have right now. But this is, you know, a two-day investigation that is ongoing. Um, but, you know, we, we were very cautious in making that declaration too early. Uh, we did a lot of work uh, that gave us the confidence that we have now. Uh, that it's not as we stand here right now. Uh, we, we are working, you know, look, we haven't, we're not ruling out anything. Okay, let me be clear. We're looking at every aspect of this case and we're gonna take, we're gonna go where the inf information and the evidence takes us. And right now, the evidence does not take us there. Um, we do have another working theory that, that we're looking at and it, where the evidence has taken us to and we're gonna exhaust that. Uh, and then if we get there and it takes us somewhere else, we're going to exhaust that. And, and we may be back here having different conversation. Um, but as of this press conference, um, we are confident with what, we, what we've seen and what we are saying. And, um, and my other question was, uh, I know you're looking at a variety of, a of people of interest.
interests at this point. No one's gotten to that suspect level. Is it your impression, at least among the people of interest that you have, that this is someone that may have been known to her, or are we talking about someone that you know, may have come in from out of town or whatever it may be? We have not exhausted anyone as a suspect, anyone. Um, the, we, we are confident we're on the right track, um, but I'm not prepared to tell you uh, the relationship between her and the suspect as of yet. I think it would be irresponsible at, at this point. Um, we've got to give the investigators more time uh, to detail out their investigation and pull evidence, uh, and we will be back here to update the case. Um, but right now, I, I just I, I think it would be irresponsible for me to say that. Hey there, uh, Reuven Fenton with the New York Post. Hello. Hello. Um, just to, to, to continue off what you were just saying, and uh, did, uh, you said you know you're not ready to, to speak about the relationship. I assume do you also mean or lack thereof. In other words, is it is it also possible you're not saying whether they knew each other or not? Exactly. I'm okay. not confirming or denying uh, what uh, the investigation has revealed thus okay. far. Um, a minute ago, you spoke about, um, you know, you, you have a work, uh, theory you're going with right now. I mean, is there, any, is there uh, in regards to that theory, in terms of motive, well, maybe this is a kind of a moot point because you can't really speak on it, but I mean, can you, can you, can you uh, uh, elaborate at all about the, the nature of the motive, if you know what I mean? The, like, like, is it is it a, a motive pertaining to a, a, a desire one person had over another, and, and you know, it, it, I don't know. Is there anything you can say about this this working theory? Yeah, I, and I know where you're where you're going. Yeah. Um, and, and when I say theory, I, I don't want to characterize it as a cavalier assessment of of, of information. Uh -huh. I mean, it's beyond a theory. Um, but what the investigators do is they look at the evidence. They look at all the evidence and, and, and a number of different things that we're not going to discuss today. Okay. Uh, and they begin to go down certain paths as to what is likely to have occurred, what possibly occurred uh, throughout a course of events. And it starts with literally investigating every aspect of who she's been in contact with, her course of travel, who she interacted with, who was the last person she talked to, and all the way back and develop suspects. And, and so in the course of doing that, you know, you look at certain things such as, was this a home invasion? Okay, and, and then you, you either make the determination that it either was, was not, or maybe. Uh, what we have certainty with is that it wasn't, right? So, so now you start to shape the course of your theory. Um, then you look at, uh, was this a hate crime? Um, and again, you use that same you know, three-step method. Is it possible? Is it yes? Is it no? And if so, what areas would you be looking for? And these are experts that do this. Um, and we're confident that we have no, any indication at this point uh, that that's the case. And then we go down the list of many, many, many things um, from relationships to friendships to, you know, you name it. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't rule out anybody without verif verification. Uh, that they're not a suspect, and that includes neighbors and, and everyone, you know. Um, and so that's where they're at right now. But as you do that, you build out a theory as to possibly what happened. Uh, but it's a, a very deliberate uh, process. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, something that's done in a vacuum. These are trained expert investigators working with uh, the FBI, the Michigan State Police, and other, our other federal partners to ensure uh, that we, we look at everything. So okay. that's where we're at. Uh, I know where you're trying to get me to go, but as I that's indicated, okay. I can't get there. And I, I, I see on the, from the stripes on your arm, you've been a cop for a long time. I mean, have you ever, in terms of what you've seen over the many years you've been doing this, I mean, how, how, how brutal was this and then the scope of things that you've experienced and you've seen? I mean, have you ever seen anything like this before? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I've seen similar things. Um, you know, any time that you have... Uh, a loss of life in our community is it's a tragic day for us. Um, and certainly when you hear about her contribution to the community, uh, to society, um, and, the, and the great loss, uh, and all the people that she's helped, and literally everyone that I have heard from, and it's been a lot of people, uh, they start the conversation all the same, how wonderful a 
of a person she was. So that's a great loss uh, to our community and to our city. Chief Victor Williams of Local 4. You have a lot of people living on Joliet Place who may still feel unsafe with the killer out there still. What would you say to them first off? Well, we've, I've said it. Um, you know, I don't, I don't feel that, that they're at risk, but if they saw anything, no matter how small they may think it is, if they saw someone that's not known to the neighborhood, uh, may have been there earlier in the week, if they saw anyone lurking around the area, uh, certainly let us know. Uh, any small moniker of information uh, could be the break we're looking for in this case. Uh, check your video cameras on your home. Uh, share all the information that you have with us. Anything uh, small or large, please make sure you share it with us. And can you at all reveal the location of that wedding at all? Um, I'm sure it'll be out. I'm, I'm not going to be the one that gives it. Uh, I, you know, someone just got married and want to yeah. separate the two. Um, you know, the, the only connection it has is that she was there. And we will be talking to folks about that uh, in the very near future. Gotcha. Thanks. Uh, Jeremy Edwards with ABC News. Um, just wanted to see if, uh, if you could speak to if she had her cell phone on her, any forms of ID? She had her cell phone with her. Um, I don't know if she had it. An ID. Cell phone and ID. On the scene? Mm -hmm. or at the, yep, both. Mm -hmm. Um, and the person of interest that you have been working with and talking with, have they been cooperating in, with the investigation? Well, as I said, we haven't disqualified anybody yet. Uh, there are a number of people that we're interested in. Uh, we have not zeroed in on one person of interest. We have a number of people that we're talking to. Uh, and as I understand it, that everybody we've talked to have been somewhat co cooperative. We haven't heard that they're uncooperative, let me say that. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Rebecca Rosenberg with Fox News Digital. <clears throat> so I'm just wondering, you said you're working through multiple suspects. If you don't have a key suspect in mind yet, how are you able to exclude, uh, for instance, a hate crime motive or anti-Semitism? So uh, if I misspoke, what I said was a number of persons of interest. If I call them suspect, I may have misspoke. Um, and as I indicated earlier, there's a process to um, how we disqualify suspects, how we disqualify persons of interest uh, that uh, the detectives are engaged in. Uh, and certainly, as I talked about, uh, the steps we go through in identifying any crime, um, we're confident w w where we've arrived with this particular crime. Uh, we, we believe that the motivation is very different uh, uh, than a hate crime. Um, it's horrific and it's tragic. Uh, and, and that's the focus of, of it, the investigation. But if something uh, leads us down that path again or if something comes up, uh, we will certainly uh, be engaging our federal partners and, and looking at that. We're, we're not saying, uh, as we stand here today, that if we were to, to arrive at a, a space where uh, that becomes uh, something that, that we need to look at again, that we wouldn't. We're just saying that as, it's, as we stand here today right now, uh, that doesn't appear to be the motivation. And just a, another question, unrelated question. Um, there was a couple near the crime scene whose car tires were slashed uh, over the weekend. Um, they had left town on Friday, returned Sunday, and two, it was an older couple, both their passenger, I'm sorry, driver's side tires were slashed. They said they alerted police on the scene to this. Um, they are actually just had the tires replaced, but nobody came, processed the car for evidence. Uh, it was probably 300 feet from the, the main residence. Have you guys looked into that? Do you think it could be connected? Uh, well, we certainly will look into it. I don't know if it's connected, but we'll certainly look into it. Thank you for Thank that you. information. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is the federal nexus, I'm sorry, is the reason the FBI is involved just to see if it was a hate crime or is there some other federal nexus involved in this? Well, as you know, uh, our federal partners, uh, as well as the state police, have worked with us on a number of homicides. So this isn't unusual, but certainly having them uh, here on this one, uh, we'll be looking at all, all of those uh, avenues. But uh, we work together and continue to work together on a number of homicides with our federal partners. Thank you all for coming Thanks. today.